Sorry, miss. Okay. Uh, this is an interview with William Patrick Coyle, home interview, Elmont, New York, 18th of July, 2003, approximately 10.20 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, William Patrick Coyle. Uh, my, I am 77 years old, and my place of birth, I believe, was Astoria, Long Island. Okay. Uh, what was your educational background before you entered service? I was on, on the last of uh, a term before I graduated. I had about, I believe, four months more to go when I was called into service. Do you remember where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? In fact, I'll be truthful. I was out fishing with my brother, and we didn't even know what happened. And then we stopped to have a drink or two when we came home at this bar, and people got disgruntled with us, and we didn't know what was going on. And they said, didn't you know that Pearl Harbor was bombed? which we didn't at that time, mm -hmm. then everything got quiet after that. But that's where I was. Mm -hmm. I was with him. And, and Do you he, remember what your reaction was at all? Teed off. Mm -hmm. I was teed off. I was only uh, 18 years old and I, I was mad as hell, I should say that. Mm -hmm. um, so you were drafted? I was drafted. In fact, I waited. My mother, I wanted to join the Marines, my, and my, being a little underage, my mother says no, because my father had died and everything like that. So uh, she said, we'll have to just wait. So when I, I went down three times to find out why he didn't get in touch with me, and he said, don't worry, Whitey, we will, and about two weeks later, I was drafted. Okay, so you were drafted into the Navy? Into the Navy. Okay. Right. Uh, where did you go for your basic training? Uh, Samson, New York. Mm -hmm. I was there for, I think it was uh, six weeks, I, I believe. Then from there, I was home for about a week, and then I had a report for duty after that. From there, they took us, uh, I believe it was down to, uh, let's see, I think it was, I can't remember the, the shipyard and everything where our ship was being uh, fitted for everything, radar and all that. So while we were there, we were training, and I believe it was in Houston, Texas, or in around there. Mm -hmm. And I was there for, I'd say about six, eight weeks, something like that. And after the training, we all boarded and uh, headed for the Panama Canal. Okay, what ship did you uh, board? Uh, the, U the USS Lee Ray Wilson Destroyer Escort 414. Mm -hmm. You were the first crew? We were the first crew, right. Mm -hmm. What kind of shakedown crews did you have on the ship, or did you we do that on the way over? We did that on the way over, more mm -hmm. or less. Uh, and they came back to be fitted out to, for some other reasonings, I think. Uh, depth charges and uh, for uh, these hedgehogs. It was when they get fired up, they come down in a, in a pattern, a round pattern, and when one explodes, the rest of them all go off. So we were, had a pretty good ship there. What was your assignment on the... Uh, well, I, <coughs> I couldn't make petty officers, so I was with the deck apes in the, in the beginning, and then I, I used... Uh, my time for uh, cooking. I was cooking with them uh, as uh, an apprentice there. Mm -hmm. So I done that. But we had all the third class officers and everything. I guess when a lot of ships were destroyed, these fellas were already set for our ship and everything. So none of us could get into get any higher than where we were. So I still came out as seaman first. But when we did come back, they said, Bill, stick it out for six more months and you make third class, you know. I said, forget about it. I had enough to get out. That was it. 
It, um, you went through the Panama Canal? Went through the Where did you go from there? From there we went to, uh, let's see, uh, the big baby. Where is that? Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. That's where we went to Pearl, Pearl Harbor. We were there for maybe about a month and doing a little training here and there on things. And then from there we went out to, I got quite a few islands here. I could show you on here where how we went. Okay, yeah, on that map. On that map. Why don't you show that now I got, then? I got some, I think it's something like 24 islands we went to mm -hmm. as we went along. Oh, let me see which one that is. There's one that rings that one. No, no. That's, no, that's not. I have another one here somewhere. This one here? Is it this one? Yeah, there? that's the one. Here's, maybe I can give it to you as we went along. Now, let's see. First was Galveston, Texas. They went to Boston. Then it was Panama, Pearl Harbor, Manus, Bougainville, New Guinea, Hong Kong, Saipan, Yokosuke, Tsingtao, China, Halutiao, San Francisco, we were Houston, Bermuda, Norfolk, Virginia, Anahuita, San Diego, Palu, Ulithi, Lady, Guam, Okinawa, Tokyo, Teku, and, Lu and Luzon at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's where we went, the way we went. Okay. I was over there for a good two years, and we saw quite a bit of action. Where did you see action? I saw action in the Pacific there at Luzon, Okinawa, Lady, all of them. Mm -hmm. We got uh, hit with a suicide bomber at uh, Luzon. We were blocking an entrance with another destroyer escort. We would meet, make our turns, and go back out to stop any <coughs> chances of any torpedo boats getting through or anything while our boys were landing in there. It was at that time that we saw us, we had to keep a watch, and at that time, this thing dropped down over a mountain, came at us at about 25 feet above water, and caught us amidship. It was heading for the bridge where I was a, hand, a handler on a gun crew there, 20 millimeter. And when we saw it, and I said to the guy, and his name was Brogy. He was a cook. I said, Jesus, Brogy, here he comes. Uh, we heard the officers holler, commence firing, all 20 millimeters, all 40 millimeters, and five inches were firing at him. We couldn't stop him. He was all aflame. One wing went off, and as the ship started its turn, which they had to do, it was, there was no change in it or anything. Midship came around, and it was on one of those guns that I was on at least two weeks before when I was put up forward at the bridge. And he was heading right for the bridge because if they knocked that out, they uh -huh. knocked out a lot of parts on it. Then you have after steering on a ship that you can use. So he caught a midship and he took all the guns. There was, I think, 10, 20 millimeters or so, uh, 40 millimeters, uh, 30, uh, no, there was 20 millimeters, 10 of those, 40 millimeter or not, they hit. Uh, I think we had something like 13 aboard, seven were killed, some uh, are wounded, and some they lost at sea at that time. Mm -hmm. We also had a few of them come over before that time, that planes and just drop bombs and they must have missed us by maybe 40 or 50 feet away the last bomb was dropped and he was so low that he couldn't pull out and he hit a mountainside there and exploded. That was on Luzon. You had to hear the clapping and hooting and hollering there. But our ship and all the time out in the Pacific was under 850 air raids 
I have that on record and everything like that. Were there fires caused from this? Uh, oh yeah, if the fire was again? caused. It hit our torpedo tubes mm -hmm. with the fire, but our guys put that fire out in a split time that nothing exploded or anything. Mm -hmm. But all the the ship was a mess and everything. Then we had to go back to be uh, refitted at Pearl Harbor, and then we came back out. How long did it take them to redo the? Refit Jeez, the ship. Maybe a month or so or something like that. I'll, I'm just taking a guess. Uh -huh. And then we got, came, they came back out, and that's when we met part of the Jap fleet coming in the back way. Where, where was this? Uh, at Sarego Strait, they called it. And, uh, part of the Lady Gulf Right, actions. the Lady Gulf part. So, Could you describe that for us? Uh, it's pretty hard, but from 20 miles away they started the fire with that one of their biggest battleships that they had at that time. And they caught us with, uh, we were only DEs and destroyers bringing in these three CVs, uh, small carriers. And they caught us there, so they started to make torpedo runs. And I believe, when I was up on a bridge, I'm sure I heard somebody, the skipper, say, this is a suicide mission. And I think the 413 was the one that went out. And I think we were in 13th position. Now, there, some, something tells us that, that either we were told to take off and 413 thought it was them, but they made the torpedo run. We were right behind them, say maybe a half a mile, when they called us back to protect the carriers and everything. They made a torpedo run, turned sideways. They threw their torpedoes. They deadened a cruiser. I believe it was a cruiser in water. And they were blown. 190 men or so went down with the ship and everything. So that was one of the battles we were in there. But all together, and then from there we went to Okinawa, which for 52 days we were on a picket line. And the, they just came in sunrise and sun, sunset. We were at our gun stations at 5 o'clock every morning. And as soon as sunrise would come up, in would come hundreds of those Jap planes. And they'd just come flying around, dive on you. you we were under, I don't know how many attacks over there, but 850 altogether we were under our ship alone. <coughs> I Do you have any near misses with the kamikazes oh, there? Oh yes, yes. I, in fact, I, we were coming into a, a station, I, I, I'd have to look it up, mm -hmm. where we were going to anchor. And at that time it was low clouds. It was a very cloudy day and we heard, we got the alarm and I was on war cruising station up on the range, find the range keeper mm -hmm. that took care of the five inch guns. And all of a sudden, we heard this plane up above, and we knew he was around us. And they said, just keep wherever you think you hear it. And I just kept my eyes on the range keeper and everything, range finder. And all of a sudden, he dove down, spitting like anything. I fired a sh around. And we blew off a wing, as far as we know, because down he came like that. And he just he tried to make a turn or so, but he splashed into the water. Now, we were all hooting and hollering about that, and they, I, I made a, another shot when he was coming down. But not thinking, I'm three stories up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the five-inch guns on a main deck. So when he was coming down, I let another one. They said, cease firing, and they come over and they pushed it up. So the guns would face up. When you're in the heat of battle there, you're not thinking, you're just looking for him. Mm -hmm. But what happened, we were all standing like that, and a big splash went right under one of our ships, <laughs> quite a ways over, but it didn't hit us right there like that. We were sweating that out. But we got chewed out for it, because I understood after a while that when there's so many miles out and you're going to anchor, you have to change all your ammunition, because these were magnetic shells, so that shows you how close I was when he exploded up there. Mm -hmm. 
So, if you were in there, it's a one to one of those shows, just it didn't catch our ship. I got mm -hmm. blown it the hell over there. But that's about some of my experiences. Were you there for the typhoon? Typhoon? We rode that baby out. We rode it out. Uh, and uh, in fact, we almost took one of our own DEs. We took it for a sub because they lost one of their whole masts and everything like that. And when we caught it coming up on something like that, we had guns all trained on it. We were just as bad off as they were. But then they said, don't fire, don't fire. It was one of our own destroyer escorts out there. But we, we rode it out all that time. I think it was five days. And I'm telling you, I never saw waves like that in my life. I swear they were 40, 50 feet high because when you looked up, it, it looked like it would take over your whole ship. Then you'd be up and you <laughs> look like, if, for Christ's sake, if you ever jumped overboard, you'd break your neck there. It was, that's how deep it was. But uh, I went through a hell of a lot with the guys. I had a lot of good guys. They talk about being a hero. The guys that are dead, they're the heroes. Now, oh, um, did you, you, I noticed you went to uh, China and Japan. Right. When did you go into those places and what did you do there? Well, I know we went to uh, China for a while and uh, we were there for now, a while. Now, was this after the war or before was, the treaty was signed? Or? I think it was still just before the treaty. After mm -hmm. it was signed, we were just, when, when we thought we were coming home with Bound, we were out to sea, I guess it was about three days or so, and the skipper piped over and he says, in fact, I don't even think it was the treaty then. Mm -hmm. It was, they had dropped the bomb or something like that. But they had said to us, uh, I know you guys were looking for the homeward bound flags. But he says, I hate to tell you, but we're heading for Japan. And that was to invade them. Mm -hmm. And we knew millions were going to die. Because when you got over there, a lot of their windows all had machine guns, whether women or men or children were going to mm -hmm. use them that on us. They figured at least a million would die. Over what that. was your reaction when you heard about the dropping the atomic bombs? I was happy as hell. Mm -hmm. How about I did, those? We didn't know did too hear, much about it. How did you it. hear about that? I think it came over radio. We mm -hmm. we got the radio at night because a lot of times we used to listen to uh, what's that broad over? Tokyo, Tokyo Rose. Rose. Sof yeah, Tokyo Rose, and she used to say many a night, the Army and Marines may walk the streets of Tokyo. The Navy never will. And we never realized what they meant. But the kamikazes were supposed to wipe out our Navy. And then they would have quite a bit of the ocean out there where they could take over, you know. Mm -hmm. And they did a pretty good job on us. I'm sure there was at least 70 or 80 ships were lost and everything like that through some of these mm -hmm. campaigns that we went through. Because when even we were at Okinawa for 52 days, we were always assigned to the next uh, uh, group of ships as you kept going around. And always the one behind us got hit. It was always seemed to be like that. But we had taken that beating when we, got, we were there at uh, Luzon and everything. So we knew what to watch out for. But we were at our battle stations five in the morning until the battle was over and then at night they'd come in again at, at sunset. They'd come in there after us and that. And that was a constant battle. That was the greatest part of it all was the fear because you never knew when it was your time. Mm -hmm. And when not that plane was heading for us. He was heading for the bridge, like I said, to knock out everything. But as the, the ship turned, and I, those guns, I was only talking to fellas before we got into that action, and I said, what do you fear most? Because there were some fellas that, were, that came aboard that were in the cover invasion before we were. And they said suicide bombers, and those guys were killed. They were good buddies of mine.
Did That's you ever go ashore in Japan? Yes, I was ashore. In fact, I was working with a group of guys and we had some of these Japanese would come around us and say, uh, how good are you guys are uh, that you're walking in Japan and stuff like that. And we knew that there was going to be either a battle or something like that. We'd just holler, hey room! <laughs> and our guys would come room. Yeah. <clears throat> but we didn't do too bad over there. Okay, when were you, uh, when did you return to the States? I think it was in 1946. Six, yeah, I got out. Okay. Um, did you uh, make use? Of, well, I have one other question I meant to ask. Uh, did you uh, recall where you were when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt and your reaction to that? I I couldn't swear uh -huh. where we were at that time, but I know we all had sickened hearts mm -hmm. because. You, you, you knew he was your leader, and now, now what was going to happen, you know. But Did you make use of the GI Bill? No, no. I 5220 Club? I only used, I think, two. Mm -hmm. two uh, that was 5220. Did you join any veterans organizations on your return? I belonged to the Veterans of Foreign War and the uh, their, uh, Legionnaires. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, ever stay in contact with anyone that uh, was in service with you? No, I never have. Uh, it was only lately that we had gotten a call. My son, I let him take care of it. This fella claimed he had, uh, what was it? The it was, a, um, it was a, an association of people that were on your ship. Yeah. On the DE-414. Oh yeah, and he was down below mm -hmm. and he got that lung problem. Being with uh, oh, asbestos, yeah, asbestos. But he says he wanted me to, you know, tell him about it. I we really didn't know what guys down below what their job was, you know, and all that. And uh, I was always topside. I was with the deck gapes, and then I was up cooking and all that stuff. So, and I just I didn't want to take a chance to goof them up in any way. Mm -hmm. But that was the only. Uh, time I ever heard from somebody. So you haven't attended any reunions or anything? No, I haven't been. My, I've had too sick of a wife here until she's... They're planning a reunion, though. Huh? They're planning a reunion. They are planning, they are planning yeah. My son is keeping in uh, contact with them. I don't know if I'll ever get through okay. Now, you have a picture to show of your, your ship? Yes, this is... Any idea what happened to the ship after the war? It's been... Uh, Scuttled more or less. Okay. Yeah, if you hold that just up in front yeah. of you like uh, like that, it'll, Wayne will be able to focus in on it. It's a little too close, I think. Okay, I'm getting a little glare. Can you just tilt it back a little bit? Tilt it this way? Yeah, it's a little better. Just gonna get the whole thing in. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm. That's okay. Yes. Okay. And you had a. Oh, that you could take one side. Yeah, this is a special diploma. <laughs> this is when I was. You were a shell back, and then once you crossed the equator. Neptune Rex. How many times did you cross the equator? God, I couldn't tell you. I mm -hmm. really don't know. Once you said 14. Huh? Once you said 14. Once, well, then that's what it was on it. Okay. All right. And you had, uh, I think we looked at that. Oh, you saw that one? Yes. Uh, the other, we got a couple other. Oh, yeah, this there. is one I 
Just got my diploma. It's a year ago. Okay. Yeah, about a year ago. If you can yeah. tilt that back a little, I'm getting glare. Okay, right, right there is good. Now, where are you in the photograph? It's just the white-headed guy. Okay, right over, over in the next screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting. You're looking like a ghost in this, but that's. Yeah, I can't get the get the, quite get the color in. We had Mr. Alfano help us out on that uh, assembly. He's a terrific man. Okay. Ready? Okay. okay. Now, um, you've got a couple other pieces there. Oh, what is this? This is. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the uh, conspicuous oh, this is service from New York State. From New York State, the conspicuous mm -hmm. service cross. Yeah. Okay. Got it. This is from Mr. Pataki. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you have your oh, yeah, and discharge. This is my discharge papers. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, what do you think, how do, how do you think your time in service changed or affected your life? I mean, grow up fast. I don't think I had any young time to think of anymore. Once you got out into battle, it was, it was scary. To, you can't say you didn't fear death. You did. We all did that. Mm -hmm. It just, you didn't know when it was going to be your turn. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of good times. I met a buddy of mine on Guam. I went over for a beer party. And while I'm drinking a can of beer there, and there was an explosion down there, and they hollered, Bill, hit the sand. Now, what happened? He said, there's Japs up in the hill there. And they fire down every so often. They go back in. And the Marines go up to get them. Can't find them. They, the way they were dug in, I guess they had it on track. But we had a lot of good times, I tell you. I didn't mind it. It also affected your life in terms of high school, right? You weren't able well, to I wasn't school. able to mm -hmm. go all the way through it, but my job was for the country at that time. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to do. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yes, thank you.